What's up? I'm your host, Dwayne Rambo, and this is Ohm Improvement. Today we're going to learn how to make a frame staple, but I'm going to float the core and I'm going to show you how I do that. The staple coil was created by Squid Dude probably about four years ago now, maybe even longer. Uh, I'm not quite sure who added the frames to it. Maybe it was Squid Dude. I I'm not 100% sure. Uh, what I do know is that staple builds, staple variants like a frame staple vape fantastic. And this is why I'm going to get down in here and show you how to make these as the first tutorial. Depending on the ribbon size you're going to use is going to depend on what, what size frames you can use. Start learning with 0.4 ribbon, that's the best way to learn with, and then quickly try to get your way down to 0.3 ribbon. But if you're using uh, 0.4 ribbon, you can use 26 gauge frames with it, 27, uh, and then even go down to 28. So the wire that I'm going to use to make this build is 0.3 by 0.1 ribbon wire, Nichrome 80. 28 gauge frames, Nichrome 80, and I'm going to fuse it with 40 gauge Nichrome 80. You can use 38 gauge, but 40 gauge works better. The, the problem with 40 gauge is it can get dirty faster, so it's a, it's a little bit more coil maintenance, but it ramps up faster, and uh, the profile of the coil is just a little bit smaller. So if you need something just a little smaller to fit into an RDA, you know, you can always consider using 40 gauge as the fuse wire going over your core wire. The tools that I use to build this is a tape measure, and for two reasons I use a tape measure. Uh, I lay my ribbon out on there and I can measure the length. I measure the length of it, obviously, with the tape measure. But I also like to lay my ribbon in here so I can recover it out of here quickly, and I'll show you how I do that once we get to that point in the build. I like to use needle nose vice grips, and this is for when I'm done with the build and I'm wrapping it into a coil. I like to, I like to rest a coil jig directly on top of the vice grip that's locked into it and it holds the stick, and then I can just wrap the coil over it. And so needle nose pliers are always come in handy. Also, a little bit of hot glue and a torch, a mini torch, or a lighter, um, or even a glue gun if you want. You can use a glue gun, but just you need to be able to get this hot glue to melt. You can use a bigger stick of hot glue if you want. I just prefer using the mini sticks. They work a lot better. Also, a magnifying headset will really help you see this ribbon wire when you're prepping it. Uh, the way I set this up, and it really helps with the prep. It's hard to fail doing it the way I do it, but you're probably going to mess up the first couple times trying to do this. But having a magnifying headset really helps. This headset I got off of Amazon, I think for $25. And this headset came from Harbor Freight, I think it's like $6. It's not quite as good as this. They both have lights on them. This one has lights on the side. This one has an LED right over the, dead, right over the top of it here. And it really helps you see. You can, uh, you can see what you're looking at pretty well. These even come with different magnification lenses up to 3.5. So they're pretty good. I like it. I recommend getting these. Go look on Amazon for them. You'll see different variations of prices. A few different companies make them I've seen on there. Uh, so I don't know which one to tell you exactly to get but uh, they work good. So let's come on down in here and watch what I'm doing. Okay, so we're gonna take the tape measure and we're gonna stretch that out to about 20 inches, 21 inches, just because we need a little bit, little bit of extra room to play with. Inside of here, where it's curved in, I'm gonna lay my ribbon wire inside of here as I cut it. I'm gonna bring it out 18 inches and I'm gonna bring three pieces of this out 18 inches because it's gonna be folded in half into nine inches, and I'm gonna know, I'm gonna look right down on here at nine inches and swoop all the ribbon up and hold it in my hand in one shot, right from the middle of it. So there's no guessing, no grabbing it from each end, trying to fold it in half. But by taking three pieces and folding it, folding it in half, you get six pieces. And that's what we call a six ply, a six ply staple, a six ply frame staple. And this is a frame staple, so you know uh, it's a staple variant, but the staple is framed. We're also gonna need the, the frame. So let's go ahead and pull the frames out. And what we're going to do with these frames, this is how we're going to float the ribbon. We're going to pull out more than the length of the ribbon cord. So let's pull out, pull out probably about 25, 26 inches of it. Give it a tug to straighten it out. You can straighten it out in the drill as well. 
to pair of scissors to cut your wire, cut your ribbon with as well. I love using scissors to cut my ribbon wire. It's huge. So we take our frame, set our frame up in the side here. So now that we got our tape measure set out in front of us here for the ribbon, so we go ahead and we grab the ribbon wire, little tag ends, I'll cut those off. So as you can see, this is, this is Coil Society wire, or if I'm not using this for ribbon wire, I'm using Kidney Puncher ribbon wire. The reason being is their ribbon wire comes off the spool straight. You don't have to stretch it and tug it. You'll notice with other, other brands that you buy from them, you get their ribbon wire and it comes out just curled up and it, you know, it's hell trying to straighten and stretch it all out to straighten it. Uh, just do yourself the favor and order from Kidney Puncher or Coil Society if you're in the United States and uh, get yourself some straight ribbon. You could use different companies for the round wire. You could deal with the issues from it. Most of the stuff you could work with. But with ribbon wire, it's pretty important that you want to get straight ribbon wire. Save yourself the headache and trust me on that one. So let's go ahead and get this uh, three pieces out. So that's one cut. Two cut. Three cut. So now I got all of my ribbon wire inside of here. All three pieces that are 18 inches or a little over 18 inches. And I know I'm going to take it down over here and get them all perfectly on the edge here so I know it's even. And I'm just going to come at the 9, and I know i got a little more than 9, so I'll grab it right in front of the 9. And my ribbon wire is just going to droop. I'm just going to fold it down. So now that I've picked up the wire, it's just drooping down even sides on both sides. And I'm just going to take it and fold it in half. But it helps to, with, with having a magnifying set. I can't see that well. so. And it also, I'm sure it just helps everybody with prep, when you're doing prep work to be able to see what you're doing and make sure that it's all lined up perfect because these wires need to stand flat next to each other. They all need to be up against, up against their flat side, you know, the 0.3 side. So all I'm looking at is the 0.1 side. So now that I know I got these together, I'll take some saliva because they're for me. And that's a perfect stick. It looks just like one piece of wire hanging down there. And, uh, you know, it's hard to beat. So up here, I'll make sure I keep it pinched when I transfer fingers off of the loop. And that's your loop end. That loop is going to go, usually what people do is they'll take that loop and they'll hook that up onto the swivel. We're not going to do that. We're going to float this ribbon. This ribbon's not going to touch the drill and the ribbon is not going to touch the swivel. So then I'm going to show you how I do that. Let's get some 40 gauge and bind it up, up here just to hold the ribbon together. You don't need a whole lot of 40 gauge. You can even use like 38 gauge and stuff like that, but I prefer 40 gauge. I think that's the, that's the best binder. And we're gonna use that to slide down here too. Once I apply the frames, I'm gonna show you that part. So another really good thing to get are some nylon pliers. You can get them at a craft store. These are really good, they work well. And I'll take it up on the loop end here and pinch it. Now that I got it, I'm holding it up there. Put it all back together again. You see it started spreading a little bit, started drying out. But that's all back to one perfect stick again. And by pinching it up here, you know that you're holding them all together. And then you can take your magnifying headset and look at it. You get good lighting and look straight down, you're gonna see every single point one side pointing back at you. So now that we got that done, let's come down to the other end of it. And let's find the shortest one, the shortest ribbon, and we're gonna cut it all even at that, level, at that length. And that's why I always have a garbage can next to me. You don't want uh, ribbon wire getting stuck in you, any kind of wire. So do yourself a favor when you're building and have a garbage can next to you. So I'm just going to clip these off. Now that's prepped, the ribbon is all stacked and stuck together. I'm just going to set it aside and grab the frame wires. I'm going to take the frames on each end, holding it looped. These are the ends, both of my hands here. I'm going to take it and just bend it straight down to where it's bent in half. 
I'll bend it and manipulate it a little bit better. So we don't want these wires crossing down in the bottom here because that's what they're going to want to do. You want to kind of keep those straight. So you see my fingers trying to hold the frame straight a little bit and I'm just bending the top down so that's going to, this is what's going to loop over. So I just scoot underneath it. Give that second one a pinch that's down lower. And we're gonna scoot that down away. So now that's down scooted out of the way, we're gonna come back up to the top here. And we're gonna drop a dab of hot glue right over this loop in ribbon right here. And we're only gonna leave this out here to hook up to the swivel. So I soup I hot glued right over the loop of the ribbon. It's a little bit messy. It's hard to do this under camera. <laughs> so now we're going to come down to our bottom loop here. We're going to take this, this loop here, and we're going to hook that up once we know this is dry, and hook that up on your, on your swivel or your bearing, whatever you're going to be spinning on. So let's go back up top, and I'll show you how I hook this up. And we're going to take this slider and we're going to hold all this together and pull this all the way down to the bottom of the ribbon. So now that we have the loop end here of the frames connected, we're going to take the ribbon wire and grab the slider. And we're going to make sure we're going to hold this firmly and slide the slider all the way down. You could stop here and add another one. You can add another another slider of 40 gauge here and spread them out across the core. I don't. We're going to come all the way down to where the ribbon ends. And now these frames are going to be sticking out a couple inches further out. This all here is frames. The ribbon stops here and this is all frames. So you see here where the ribbon ends, the frames are coming out further. Leave these sticking out. We're going to take the slider and slide that all the way down. To the end of the ribbon. Right there. See that slider kept it all nice and neat. We slid it all the way down. And that where that ribbon ends, I'm gonna hot glue that. And now the ribbon is glued there and it's never gonna go into the drill. These are gonna go into the drill chuck just like a fuse clapped in would and the ribbon's gonna float. So there's nothing to crunch on your ribbon to make your ribbon roll over. There's nothing to mess it up or no glue inside the drill chuck that can just let go and pop, up, pop your core wire out. All right, so now that I've got this prepped, I got nine inches here prepped, plus the extended frames. They're a little bit too long. I'm gonna take my scissors and trim them down. They're probably about two and a half, three inches right here. And that's fine, you can two inches or whatever. The objective is to keep the ribbon wire from going inside of the drill and crunching down on it and rolling it, manipulating it to do things that you don't want it to do. Um, it centers it beautifully. And I use an impact chuck adapter on my drill, but you don't need that. I could just stick this directly into the, into the center here and crank down, and that's it. I don't even need to bend the legs out or nothing. These are pretty cool, they're like eight bucks for an impact chuck adapter. So you get that in there, and here's your build, voila. You could take your slider that you had down here that you guided all the wire together to the glue, slide that back out to the middle of the stick, or even closer, if you're, if you're newer at this, keep it closer, and let's fuse this thing. Let's get some 40 gauge on this, and uh, what I like to do is I have a light. I like to have a light come in and I put it up over my stick when I fuse, and I can watch the reflection very nicely. It's not necessary, you can use the headset, or you don't even need to use anything, but for me, it's just something that I like to do to shoot for perfection. And the cool thing about the frames, you can just stick your fuse wire right in between the legs of the frames and spin your drill. 
You don't got to go all the way back to the, to the impact. So just like a fuse clapton, if, you, if you're trying to build this, I'm hoping that you've already built the fuse clapton. It's the same process. You can fuse this on a 90 degree. Uh, you're going to follow this along. And as you're fusing and you want to stop and move the slider, you're going to take your drill finger and park your drill, park your spool of wire exactly where you stop. Don't move it. You take your drill hand and you move your slider up a couple inches. Then you just completely just start to drill again. And don't move your hand, you know, then until you got to start following it again. That'll help you. For, you know, a lot of times people mess up when they're fusing because when they're stopping. So just don't move your hand that you're holding when you stop. Use your trigger finger, slide it up. You don't need a whole lot of tension pulling back, but you want it enough to where the ribbon's not going to buckle on you. So, and if you notice that the ribbon seems loose, you can heat up the hot glue right here and pull it back and hold it until it dries. Blow some vapor on it. But you can pull your ribbon back and tighten it up if it seems loose to you because it's not connected on the drill side. It's not connected on the swivel side. That's why they call it floating the, floating the core. Uh, technically, it's really not floating, but you know it's not connecting on each side like normal.
this is exactly 0.11 on the dot. My batteries died in my regulator mod. I don't have other ones charged up. I wanted to show you how many watts these ran off of. 115, 120 watts is about right. But on the mech, at 0.11, still they ramp up pretty good. And you don't need nothing crazy with the Goon LP if that's, you've got something, a smaller RDA or something like that, but. It's a nice, tasty vape. The frame staple is something that you need to learn if you plan on progressing from, you know, into, into more advanced builds, so like frame staple aliens, staggered staple fuse clapped, and things like that. And I'd hope that by time now, if you're watching this, that you were, you're already making fuse claptons, you ventured into making staggered fuse claptons and trying to make aliens. So now you can take the staggered fuse clapton that you're learning and you can also take the alien that you're learning and apply that to the frames and cores of this, the ribbon and the frames. You just don't fuse normal over it. You can put your alien over it or you put your stagger over it. There's a lot of different uh, variants out there that you need to learn. So this is where it starts. This is, this is where it all begins. Ribbon wire ramps up really, really nicely. I'm a fan of Nichrome 0.3 ribbon. Uh, if you, you know, like I said, start with 0.4 if you're new, and then work your way quickly down to 0.3. Yep, that's a yummy vape. And it's even better when you put an alien over it, and it's even better when you put a staggered fuse over it. So there's so many things that you can do. This opens the doors to limitless possibilities. So if you like what you've seen, subscribe, comment, like the video. Um, if there's something that you want to see, if, if you want me to teach you how to build something, comment below, tell me. I want it to be in the beginner's category. Something a beginner build is going to be, the next couple of builds that I do are going to be based on beginner builds. Then we'll slowly work our way up to intermediate builds, things like staggered staple fuse claptons, things like that. And then we'll work our way up to more advanced builds for you guys that uh, you know, are curious how I do some of the builds that I do. I'll be showing everything that I know how to do. And like I said, comment below. Let me know what you want the next one to be. And I'll put that into consideration. Peace out.